What is going on guys and welcome back to another video with your host as always KMAC time now Sony last night dropped an absolute bomb on us Announcing that the PlayStation 1 classic is on its way. It's gonna be priced at $99 releasing this December and it will have 20 classic games on it now They didn't tell us all of the games the only games they mentioned were five games and that is Final Fantasy 7, Jumping Flash, Ridge Racer 4, Tekken 3, and Wild Arms. So a decent little variety here to get us going. Uh, two RPGs, two of the all-time great RPGs, Final Fantasy 7 probably being one of the best top five, and Wild Arms being another solid RPG. Jumping Flash is a really interesting take on um, an open world 3D platformer. It was really cool for its time. Ridge Racer 4 is a classic racing game and Tekken 3 of course is a great fighter. But that still leaves 15 other games out there and it got me wondering what games would I like to see on this system? And there are hundreds and hundreds of games on the PS1 being one of my favorite systems to collect for and retro systems to play. And a system I, I grew up on and playing all the time. So I, I put a quick list together here of games that I would like to see on it. And then uh, I'll let you guys have your comments as well. But let's jump right in with Metal Gear Solid. Now this is a classic, an all time classic in my opinion. And it's just a staple in the Sony lineup of games. And this was really the first one that really kind of got this 3D thing going for it. It was a great stealth game. There are a couple other uh, Metal Gear games on here. I think one's called like VR Missions, but to me Metal Gear Solid, the original Gear Solid game on PlayStation 1 is a must-have for this. It'll really get Sony fans excited and it's just an overall great stealth game. Got a great plot line and the uh, action in this game is great and I cannot wait to see if they announce this one. I think this one will be on there. Next up is another game that is a great RPG. The PS1 is just stacked with amazing JRPGs. And Tales of Destiny 2 is an amazing one. It got great graphics, cartoony looking, shell shaded kind of looking graphics here. Storyline is top notch. It's got great turn-based combat. And again, a game here that you, you may not be able to play otherwise because some of these games are getting very, very expensive. Tales of Destiny 2 runs about $180 for a complete copy and it'd be amazing to get this um, this great RPG in the hands of more people by making it cheaper to get and uh, by putting it all in one system here you're getting a good deal and I think it'd be a really good way to get some more expensive more niche JRPGs that are really good but it's really hard to find and expensive on into players hands. Next up is a game that I loved and I played the hell out of this one growing up and that is Parappa the Rappa. Now this did just get a, a re-release on the PS4, but that was only in Japan. That was only a Japan region only. It didn't come out in North America or Europe. And this game is so freaking cool. It's like a rhythm game. Um, it's basically kind of like Guitar Hero without a guitar. You're pushing buttons in the right thing as they come down and it's like kick, kick, punch, punch. And it's got like its own rapping beat. It's just such an interesting, Fun little game. I loved it as a kid growing up. It's such a classic PlayStation 1 game to me. It's like one of the first games I ever got my hands on as a kid. And then one that's kind of near and dear to my heart and I think it'd be perfect for this list. Next up is a really cool game. It's called Dino Crisis 2. Basically just Resident Evil but instead of zombies it has dinosaurs. Uh, amazing game here again with the, with the old school tank controls. I think that would lend itself well because if you do see in the box art here of the, of the PlayStation 1 Classic, the controllers it's coming with don't have joysticks or rumble. So it was just the original PS1 controller with the D-pad and which again lends itself very well to tank controls just as we see in Dino Crisis. But of course you could swap this out with a Resident Evil 3 probably because Resident Evil 1 and 2 are already on the PS1 and the Resident Evil Collection. So Resident Evil 3 could also be a possibility here, um, but personally I would like to see Dino Crisis 2, a great little horror shooter game on the PS1 and a good addition to this. Next up is probably one of my top five PS1 games ever and I played the absolute hell out of this one as well, and that is Twisted Metal 3. Now hopefully they go with 3 because to me that is the, the best of the Twisted Metal series. Twisted Metal 1, while being groundbreaking and probably the best selling of the, of the bunch, um, 
it just doesn't hold up quite as well as two or three. And to me, four just did a lot of things wrong. I think three, Twist Metal three was the perfect Nirvana for the series and probably the best in the series until we got black on the PS2. Um, and just a great driving shooting game. Got a great storyline, believe it or not, with Calypso and this weird thing that was tournament going on to save your life. I went to the, to the death. I love these kind of car games. And we don't see a lot of Twisted Metal anymore. We haven't seen one in quite some time since the PS3. And I think this is a big enough franchise for the PS1 that's going to make its way onto there in some fashion. Hopefully it's Twisted Metal 3. Next up, another amazing platformer that made its debut on the PS1, and that is Rayman, a cool little action platforming game. Um, one of my favorites from the back in the day. I remember having this game as a kid. Uh, it's like a direct competitor with like Mario and Sonic, and it's really cool. Uh, just a great little story here, a little 3D platformer. Uh, absolutely love this one. It's could I don't know. I think Ubisoft still owns the rights to Rayman, if, I, uh, if I'm remembering that correctly. And I think they could probably get this deal done. I think they could probably get this game on there. And hopefully they do. A great little platformer addition to the to the PlayStation Classic. Gotta have a shooter on the PS1, and I think another game that is outstanding, but maybe not a whole lot of people have gotten to play or buy recently because it's just so damn expensive. Is R Type Delta an outstanding standing shooter um just one of the best on the system in my opinion i mean you could also swap this out with uh square enix as einhander another amazing side scrolling shooter um that but both those games are just so rare and expensive these days i think it'd be a great idea to get them in the hands of more players by putting them on this system so our type delta or einhander here i think is a great fit now another series that people kind of forget about but was really popular back in the day is a first person shooter series called Siphon Filter. And I, I really enjoy these games back in the day. And I think for me, Siphon Filter 3 was the best uh, of the trilogy on the PS1. It really did a great job of storytelling. It did a great job of, of having these new first person mechanics. And it was probably one of the first first person shooters I had ever played besides like Goldeneye at the time. And I think it's a great little series. It kind of lost itself in time. I think there was a couple titles on the PS2, if I'm not mistaken. But since then, it's kind of never been talked about or remade or anything like that. So this could be a perfect little game, a little system filler here. Uh, kind of a filler title, yeah. But uh, again, another genre that you need to check it off here is a first-person shooter. And I think this is a, probably the best on the system. Next up is another thing that the PS1 is known for, and that is horror games. Now, there's any number you could throw in here. We already talked about Resident Evil and Dino Crisis, but I think Silent Hill, the original Silent Hill, or maybe Clock Tower, uh, Parasite Eve, any of those games could fit right in here. Uh, Konami owns the rights to Silent Hill. Now, we did get the Silent Hill HD remake collection on the PS3 and the Xbox 360, so maybe they won't go uh, to re rehash this game again. But I think Silent Hill fits perfectly here. If not, Clock Tower, Parasite Eve, like I said, there's, I mean, there's tons of horror games out. Any of those would be a perfect fit for this, and I, I'm really excited to see what they do with the horror genre on the, the PS1 Classic. Now, a game that people are massive cult fans of, and we just never seem to get much love from Capcom or from anyone, is the Mega Man Legends series. There's two of these games on the PS1. Um, the, they're both pretty pricey. The second one is extremely pricey. Uh, games that are really good, though. They're like kind of like RPG kind of Mega Man games and um, really popular. They haven't really been remade or put on anything. There's, like I said, they're super expensive, hard to get your hands on collector items. And I think putting either one or both of them on here would be would be just a great selling point for all Mega Man fans, Capcom fans, Sony fans alike. Um, maybe even uh, including this super rare one, which is called uh, The Inventors of Tron Bon. Um, kind of like a third spin-off of that. Uh, that. That game is incredibly expensive, hundreds of dollars. If they put that on there, again, getting more value for your $100 investment, you're getting all these super rare games. Um, could be a really cool thing, but I think they'll probably put on Mega Man Legends 1 and 2. Uh, could be a really cool addition to there. Uh, next up, my favorite platformer on the system, and that is Klonoa, a game that just came out of nowhere, the Japanese style game here. It's, it's really, really cool. It has a few sequels. I think there's a couple on the Game Boy Advance. There's a couple on the PS2 that are uh, pretty expensive as well, and this one's worth a, quite a bit of money, a game that you may have missed or you know want to play, but again, it's so expensive, you can't you don't can't justify spending $80, 90 on a PS1 game. But uh, this could be a perfect little game here. 
I love Klonoa. It's such an interesting take on platforming, you know, using your enemies to jump. It's got all kinds of cool things. It this, uh, graphically looks amazing. Just a great little platforming game, and I think it'd be a perfect fit for the system as well. Getting back to some racing games, I know the PS1's full of like Ridge Racer and, P and uh, other things like that, but to me, a series that I really, really enjoyed was the Jet Moto series, and Jet Moto 3 was the pinnacle of the series. It's got great looking graphics for its time period, good sound list of a track list here, but that, that could be a thing holding it back. I don't think they'll be able to get the licensed music, um, so that could be something holding this game back from being on this list. Um, because they've had to relicense not only the game but the music, and that could be a whole lot of trouble. So maybe if they come up with a, like a, a, a different set list of, of music they already have licensing for, or something like that. But I would love to see Jet Moto 3 somehow on there. Um, next up is probably the game I played top five most games I've ever played ever on any system, and that is Driver 2. And oh man, this game is amazing. I still go back and play this game sometimes. The Driver series was one of my favorites. Uh, I played it before I played Grand Theft Auto, obviously, because it was on the PS1, even though Grand Theft Auto is also on the PS1. And I feel like they might include a, a top-down Grand Theft Auto game, but we'll get that in a second. But Driver 2 is just an amazing game. It's got a great storyline. Uh, one I really enjoy about this crime, uh, you play a bad guy. And he's trying to hunt down people. And this one's set in Chicago. Uh, I really, really like it. I mean, yeah, the graphics don't really hold up by today's standards, but you know, whatever. That doesn't really matter. Not what we're talking about here. But a great game. Uh, so much fun in this game is. It's got an open world city you can explore. It's got a pretty decently sized map for the time period as well. A game that I absolutely adore, and I'm hoping that we get at least one driver game, one or two, on there. Uh, next up. I have down is another outstanding JRPG that's incredibly overpriced, probably one of the higher priced games on the system, and that is Suicoden 2, just an outstanding turn-based JRPG. The Suicoden series uh, 1 and 2 are on the PS1. Both either of these games would be a perfect addition. Like I said before, the JRPG series on the PS1 is just stacked with all kinds of games, like Breath of Fire, Suicoden, Tales on there. So, so many of them. Now, of course, you got your Final Fantasies on there as well. Um, so many JRPGs, and I feel like if they include a, a good number of them, just, these games have so much depth. You'll be getting so many hours of playtime out of them. Absolutely love this one as well. And I think it's a game that should be on there. And my final game, and the game I want to see the absolute most on here, the game that I would, that would put me over the edge of spending $100 on this, and that is... Castlevania Symphony of the Night. My favorite Castlevania game of all time, guys. Just top-notch, great gameplay. Super tight controls on the action platforming, and the combat system is super amazing here. You got your battle systems, and on top of that, the soundtrack. Guys, the original soundtrack to, uh, to this game is out of this world. I have it on my iPod. I play it in the car sometimes. It's amazing. It's so, so good. Easily my favorite Castlevania game of all time, and I've played a lot of them. And this game, if for me, if I put that on there, it, it's gonna, it's really gonna get the collectors out. It's a pretty pricey game; it's like a fifty, sixty dollar game. So it would get the collectors out there. It would really get people going on this. I think that this would be a big tipping point for a lot of Konami fans, a lot of Castlevania fans, and a lot of Sony fans to jump in. And be like, all right, this is they ha take my money, Sony. This is the game that I wanted to play the most, and I think it's one of them. But anyway, guys, there's my pick for the 15 games that should be included. I know I included a couple of other extras in there, like Secret of Mana's sequel uh, on there, which is called Legend of Mana. Um, other things like that I could have included. Let me know down in the comments. Like I said, there's so, so many games that could go here, and there's so many different genres and kooky games out there that I didn't even get to. Uh, let me know your picks, what games you guys want to see on the PS1 Classic, and hopefully we'll get, be getting more information on it soon. When we do, I'll be sure to make another video on it. So make sure you guys are smashing that like button. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe for more videos like this in your sub boxes daily. But until next time, guys, remember that it's always KMAC time somewhere. Till then, take it easy and peace out.